PPI plasmid, which is not pathogenic to plants. In fact, the TI plasmid vector uses the same mechanism to deliver other genes of interest in plants. Once we have obtained the recombinant DNA molecule using a cloning vector, another challenge is introducing this recombinant DNA in the host cells. In DNA, the deoxyribose sugar and the phosphates are hydrophilic in nature, therefore cannot pass through the cell membranes. To overcome this problem, Bacterial cells have to be made competent to take up plasmids. Therefore, they are treated with divalent cation like calcium. This enhances the efficiency of the entry of DNA into a bacterium through pores on the cell wall. After this, Recombinant DNA can be forced into such cells by incubation of cells with recombinant DNA on ice. This process is followed by administering a heat shock to the cells at around 42 degrees Celsius and putting them back on ice. After this, the bacteria are able to take up the recombinant DNA. Apart from cloning vectors, foreign DNA fragments can also be introduced into host cells using methods such as microinjection and biolistics or a gene gun. The microinjection method involves the direct injection of recombinant DNA into the nucleus of an animal cell. While in the biolistics or gene gun method, Plant cells are bombarded with high-velocity microparticles of gold or tungsten coated with DNA. This method uses disarmed pathogen vectors, which when allowed to infect the cell, transfer the recombinant DNA into the host. The use of cloning vectors and methods such as microinjection and biolistics are crucial in genetic engineering as they help create genes of human and scientific interest. Recombinant DNA